tell you about New Beginnings. Well, there's two parts to New Beginnings, though, as far as the vision is concerned. One part is the fact that it's a multiracial church. The second part for New Beginnings is that one of the things God showed me was that New Beginnings is like the Cape of Adullam. The Cape of Adullam was a place where people who had been hurt, they would run to that cave and they were considered David's mighty men and they were there looking for uh, refuge and Cape of Adullam is that place. So is New Beginnings place where people can come where if they did the hurting, it's a place for them to find refuge. If they've been hurt, it's a place for them to find refuge. The beliefs of the house, you know, it's funny, a lot of people ask, what are the beliefs, uh, what, what, what do we have as beliefs for our church? Uh, easiest place to find the beliefs for our church is to open the Word of God. We believe in the Word of God from Genesis to the maps in the back. If it's in there, we believe it. We believe in all of the gifts of the Spirit. We believe in the fruit of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit should be full operation in the church. It shouldn't be um, one or two in operation because we, we don't like the other three, four, five, and six. But all the gifts of the Spirit um, that the Lord mentions in the Word of God um, should be in operation in the church. And, and that's the beginning. That's, that's our belief. That's our belief system. Um, a certain question that people may ask me, but the, the bottom line is that they would just open up their word and whatever they read in the word of God, whatever the Lord is saying, that is exactly what we believe. And I remember one day I was sitting in the church and, and um, there was a revival that had taken place and the man of God there preached the word and, and he walked around the room and began to lay hands and prophesy over a number of different people. One of those persons was myself, and when he came and laid hands on me, he began to speak to my life. Speaking to my life, um, what confirmed that it was the Lord was that before he began telling me what God was calling me to, um, he began telling me about some things I had been talking to the Lord about that I hadn't shared with anyone, and that was confirmation that it was the Lord speaking through him to me. And at that point, I was open. I was ready for anything, whatever the Lord had to say. And then he began to let me know that God was calling you to preach the gospel. And, you were going to go around preaching the Word of God to a pastor. And from that point on, I just, it, it wasn't so much of a um, receiving it for the first time, but it was more of a confirmation of what the Lord had already said to me within my spirit. What should you expect when you come to a new beginning service? One of the things you expect just walking in the doors is a friendly place. It's, a, it's an extremely friendly atmosphere um, as soon as you walk through the doors. One of the first things you're you sense when you walk through the beginnings. Um, you also sense that it isn't, um, there isn't a thought process of this is a Baptist church, for sure, I know it, or this is a Methodist church, or this is a church of God. The atmosphere that, that we believe God and has given us to set is an atmosphere where any believer should be able to walk into, be in a position where they can feel free to just worship God and not feel like um, there's an atmosphere that's set by a denomination. Um, because we're a non-denominational church and also be able to feel free to understand that they're in a place where we just go by the Word of God. Not about, not about a bunch of creeds that man might have set in place. Not to say that that's wrong, but to be a true non-denominational church in our eyes is to be able to walk into a place and be in a position where you feel free to worship. Um, you're also going to come to a place where it's a relaxed atmosphere. You know, it's not the typical atmosphere. You'll see some folk dressed up with a suit and ties, you know, and you'll see somebody else in the apple bottom jeans, somebody just being in a position where they're relaxed, enjoying service. And the other thing you'll notice is that it's, um, it's multiracial, you know, um, white, black, Hispanic, you name it, you know, it's there. Um, all different cultures, different nationalities in the house. We're a theocratic church. We're not a church that's set up and ran by boards. Um, the flip side of being ran from a, a democratic type church setting is that boards run the church. The pastor doesn't really have the opportunity to follow the vision in which God has given him or given her. But in a theocratic church, a man of God hears a word from the Lord and goes back to the people and shares with them, hey, this is where the Lord says we're going. And that's where we go. Um, could you imagine if Moses, you know, when God said to Moses, Moses, you're going to... I'm going to part the Red Sea. Lift your hands and we'll go from there. Could you imagine if Moses said to God, God, okay, that sounds great, but just give me one second. Let me go down to the people 
and let's take a vote to make sure that's what they want to do. No, it was, it was a theocratic ran operation. And, and that's how we run the church. Doesn't mean that we're perfect, doesn't mean that the pastor makes all the right decisions, but, but we're hearing from the Lord. The Lord is directing us.